Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular DIY. I've got another Bafaco module to look at this morning. It's called the Instrument Interface. It's version two, it's the new and improved version. And it's so new and improved that it's not actually out yet. Well, at least at the time of filming. By the time I've edited this all down, it will probably have been released for weeks. But at this point, I'm ahead of the curve and it's something very, very new. What does it do? Well, who knows? No, I do know a little bit about it. It's a module that's going to allow you to plug your guitar, a microphone, a synth directly into your modular system without any fuss, any messing about, any dealings with other bits of external bits and pieces or associated paraphernalia. Just plug your thing directly in. It's got phantom power for your microphone. It's got an impedance switch between guitar level, line level, that kind of thing, and it has a built-in envelope follower, which means that essentially when you play guitar, play a note or sing into it, it can take that as a trigger and stuff that into other things in your modular. From my very simplified point of view, what it means is that I can plug a microphone into my Eurorack and start using my voice within it. And that's very interesting to me. Funnily enough, this weekend, I've got a, a bit of a gig. Well, it's actually an album launch party, which is very exciting. So I'm putting some music out there, and at the same time, I'm gonna do a performance, and I've invited my sometime collaborator, Hannah, along to sing alongside the Eurorack, which is brilliant. Well, I haven't actually created yet what it is we're gonna be doing, and it's only a couple of days away now, but I'm sure I'll be able to pull it all together. But part of that thinking is to be able to just plug her straight through and modulate and delay and sample and do all those things within the Eurorack, within the improvisation, within the performance. That could be completely awesome, but it's only gonna be awesome if I can get this actually built and done and ready and working and understood by the time that comes around in a couple of days. So I'm here now in the morning, I've probably got about five hours I can give this today, and with a bit of luck, I can get all the way through it. I mean, the last build took about four hours of chopping kinky, and this seems complicated. I mean, Manu from Bafaco said to me that, what's the word he used? Well, let's just say that he considers it to be a little bit challenging, probably because of the density of components on the board, and you've also got big things to deal with, chunky components, and stuff like that. So this, I think, could be quite an interesting build. So let's check out what we got. There's quite a lot. It's a few bits and pieces, and it's stickers, stickers which are great. Let's have a look at this PCB. So there's the front panel. Back I do make rather nice front panels, I have to say. So it's not that wide a module. All the, the complexity is the stuff that sits behind it. And this is the PCB two of. So yeah, there's a lot of holes on there. <laughs> I reckon this is going to take a little bit of time. Elsewhere though, we have a bag of capacitors, including a great big fat one. I mean, look at the size of that. You've got a bunch of ICs, got the LEDs and switches and bits and pieces, sliders, that great big nitric socket, a couple of knobs, and then this bad boy, bag A, with all those resistors in. So that's going to be the fun time. Oh yes, fun times. Now because this is so new, there's no online version of the manual because the product isn't online yet. It's not on their website. So I'm having to go with what they sent me and I'm just trusting that it's more or less more or less correct. Well, of course it is. It'll be fine. Now, one of the things it says at the top here is that we will be soldering both boards at the same time. It's not doing one board, then the other. You're doing kind of them concurrently, which is interesting. And it suggests that if you keep the panels together, that might help you through the build. So despite wanting desperately to snap this in half, and snap the edges off, it's suggesting that I keep it together. At least that's my assumption of what that means. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to give that a go. So in terms of the efficiency with which I do these videos now, I'm going to stop talking in a minute and just get on with the soldering and I'll be doing a time lapse on the soldering with my GoPro here. And so I won't be meanderingly chatting and commenting on those sorts of things as I go. I'll do a whole wadge of stuff and then we'll come back and talk about it in sections when we do each section. Does that make sense? 
It's just some way I'm trying to cut down the length of video that I have to edit down after the event in order to get these videos done and up there and useful to people in a smarter fashion. I also have two new tools to bring to the party. I'm not gonna tell you what they are exactly yet, I'm just gonna show them to you. Look, this weirdly colored thing. <laughs> and then this. Very exciting. I mean, these were suggested to me by well-meaning people on YouTube in comments and such like, and they, they might be useful. I don't know. They only cost a couple of quid. So I'm going to try those out. Otherwise, I've got my Soldier 9 all uh, heated up. I've got solder ready to go, bits and pieces. I think I'm just going to have to go and make a go of it. And if you're wondering what's happened to the Decar's Dream, well, it's just sitting over here. I'm going to start it. I think I'm gonna give it a week in November to see uh, what I can do with it. So just hold on, I haven't just quite started it yet. I'm about to start it. I've just got a few other things that need to be done and gotten out of the way first, and then I'll start cracking on with it. So let's get stuck into bag A. Bag A, bag A, bag A. Lots of stuff. Those, oh look, diodes, more, <laughs> more. Oh, those are nicely colored, look at those. Now, of course, what I probably should do is go through my list of components to make sure I have everything, but I reckon, right, that you can do that as you go. So sod it, solder stuff in, and you'll soon find out whether you're missing things. So I guess I just go through it. I go through it like I normally do, Stick things on the board. Here's the board. Which way up? So normally speaking, we do resistors first because they're the smallest part of the board. So let's do a whole load of that. I've got 13 of the first 1K resistor. So that sounds like a good place to start. Now, this is where this weird looking tool comes into play. <laughs> I don't know. The idea is, right, it helps you bend the legs. So you just put it there and you can bend the legs around it like that. Obviously, you need to take it off the flipping stupid. Oh. Now, this needs to go into R11. R11. Cool, crikey, this is going to do my eyes in. So R11 is there. Now, even though I did it in that thing, it's still too big. So I get the feeling that I'm gonna just mess it up. Oh, come on, it's the first one. I don't not mess up the first one. So let's try that again. So here are my uh, resistors. Take off a resistor. So I put it in the smallest end like this, and then I can just fold the legs down. It's totally brilliant. The only snag is that this that I've got here is still too wide. It's too wide for the board. See, it's just, it's miles too wide. So that's completely useless. It's a great tool. It just doesn't go small enough. That's the problem. So all right, stick that to one side for now. Maybe it'll be good for diodes and stuff later on, but for the moment, that's not fitting in there. I'm gonna have to pull it through like I did before. So that was exciting. <laughs> right, well, I'm gonna get on with these resistors now. Hopefully I'll make my way all the way down to the bottom without too much hassle, and we'll have a look at it afterwards. See where we get to. All right.
I just wanted to pause a moment as I'm putting these last resistors in just to comment about how how packed this board is. It really is extraordinarily packed in here. I mean, everything is labeled, everything is on there. It's just some of it is a little bit to the side or a little bit with a line leading to it. It's not always 100% clear and you're sort of going, well, is this, is this this one? I don't know. I mean, luckily at the back, they, they do have a slightly larger version on the, on the manual for you to refer to, which is helpful, certainly. But gee whiz, it's tricky getting these things in here. And also some of the pads seem to kind of interlock. So when you solder one, you seem to be soldering the thing next to it. And I guess that's, that's by design because ultimately these resistors connect to each other in some way or some fashion. So I'm just going with the assumption that that's okay. <laughs> and if something is not meant to be together, then there'll be enough distance for that to not happen, if you know what I mean. The other problem I've got is trying to identify bloody resistors. There's probably an art form to it, or I mean, obviously I could probably get another piece of test equipment, but it seems like the more and more equipment you get, the less and less you're actually making the thing and why don't you just buy it built in the first place. But identifying resistors, that's the thing. I mean, brown looks like red to me. I mean, I'm getting in there going, I mean, what is this? This is, I mean, this one is, is brown, gray, black, orange, brown, is it? Brown, gray, black, red, brown. Is that a red? That doesn't look like red. <laughs> Does it? Just see what I mean. It's tricky. It's definitely tricky. And I'm, I'm hoping that, I mean, I've got like five left now, I think. I'm hoping that they will just, I will be able to identify them or at least some of them and put them in and the other ones will be close enough to what I suppose it will be. And then by the process of elimination, they will work themselves out. I'm sure they will work themselves out. So that, that's all the resistors. It's all the resistors. It's taken me about an hour or so, so I guess I'm on track. That's the, the biggest page of individual stuff. I've still got a few pages to go, mind. But in the end, all the single resistors seem to go into place. I'm still a bit perturbed by the color banding, but I guess you get the hang of it eventually. Now we have the diodes to move on to. These things here, these need to be orientated around the right way. Hopefully there'll be enough information on the board for me to do that. I think so. Now, what do they say that they are? Do they have something on it? Okay, IN5400. <laughs> They're so weeny. That's impossible to see, impossible to read. But I can see kind of a one eight. Oh, there's a four, four eight. Yeah. Right, possibly four one four eight. <laughs> but by the process of elimination, I know that these are the ones that these aren't. I can read these ones, so I know what they are. Then over here, this should be two, five eight one seven. 5817, and so these must be the Zs. The 457. 457, yes. Okay, all present and correct, good. Let's get on with the diodes.
Just a note on the, all those diodes, look. They're all done, looking good. Also put the ferrite beads on there as well. Got to be really careful which way round you put the diodes. That's always important. The, the line needs to go where the line is on the board. But it's all printed on there. You've just got to give it a little bit of, of thought, not go too quick. But that's looking excellent. So we're coming on a pace now up to the capacitors. It says that identifying capacitors can be quite tricky. Codes stated are indicative. Indicative. Please take a look at this guide for help identifying capacitors. Oh, send you over to a wiki how. <laughs> That's interesting. So I'm going to have to pull all these out and have a look, I guess. Okay, I think I've got that sorted. Nice. So I'm going to get stuffed into these capacitors and I'll see you on the other end. That is all the capacitors done. It's looking good. Look at that under there. Except it's not all the capacitors done. The reason why it's not all the capacitors done is because I've dropped one. The dreaded shirt cuff just scraped one off the table and it's disappeared down here somewhere. So I'm going to spend the next couple of hours rooting around for that, I guess. So that's fun, but I'll come back in a little while and we'll tackle the transistors. Found it, oh goodness me. Found it, found the little bugger. Here it is. <laughs> now where did that go? That was the last capacitor, C133. Need to be more careful with these things, but you know. <laughs> It doesn't matter how many times I tell myself. I'm always going to have a slightly cavalier attitude. And I keep getting away with it. That's the thing. So I should be seriously punished. And then perhaps I'd start taking these things a bit more seriously. Oh, good. So capacitors done. Right. What's next? This bunch of transistors then. Now, make sure they are orientated correctly. The curved and flat sides of the silk screen outline of the transistor on the PCB must match the transistor's body. Cool, yeah. So there are four of these ones. 3904s, yeah. So I've got one, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, and one. Great, transistor time then, let's get those in. Well, that was easy. Transistors all done. Now I've got the ICs 
and all their little holders to do. And a place where I get into a bit of a muddle, trying to get the things to stay in, trying to get them to be level. Oh, and all that sort of jazz. Right, place the sockets, taking care to orientate them correctly. The notch dot to one end should match the silk screen and sole them correct positions. Place the ICs in their sockets and stick them in. As far as the sockets go, it just goes in whatever matches. So we've got a four way up the top here. All right, so that's all them in. What I've got to do is solder them. But because, as I say, all these capacitors are slightly tall in places, I should have put these in first. Oh, yes. So that's a thought. Maybe put those in before the capacitors and stuff. Because particularly these polyester ones, they really do stick out. So what's my plan? What's my plan at this point? How am I going to do this? Do I need to go and get some masking tape? <laughs> so I'll just... Yeah, just like stick it about the place. Right, masking tape on. Guys, how, how dodgy is all this? So maybe I can sit it on a bit of foam, something. There's a bit of foam that's going to push up to what I'm doing. Let's see. Okay, let's get that over. Let's try this bit here. Oh, I want it flat. No, this is, no, they're not coming through. This is a disaster. Right. Rethink. Use better. Better masking tape, maybe. Could be an answer to that. All right, some of those are staying. Let's have a go at doing these ones. Just these two here. By putting that on there. Pushing down. Problem is, I'm going to let go. Yeah, so this is always a conundrum. Can I put something weighty on it? It's going to hold it down while I do this. Ah, there we go. Right, so with the use of a guitar pedal as leverage, as a bit of ballast. <laughs> Let's see if I can get that in there. So now that's attached, I don't really need that bit anymore. So I should just be able to go merrily along these bits and have them all soldered in. Good. Feel happy about that. Hope we've got everything around the right way. Right, let's see if I can plug these in the right way. <laughs> now, of course, as I've put the these things in the holders in, I've now gone over the top of what they're called. Darn it. But I know some of them are obvious. So I think I can see inside there. Ah, now this is what this is about my other tool is a leg straightener so i should right be able to put you see this here should be able to put my ic in here and i should squeeze it and that should straighten those legs so it should pop straight in 
because you know previously I've been rocking it on the side of things and trying to push it and bend it to get it right but this should just do it so that goes like that and it does it's the right size brilliant all right so this one this one genius completely genius genius this one not so much not so much I don't have anything which requires anything this big it just makes everything the legs far too wide so that's a complete waste of time unless perhaps there's a smaller one maybe there's a smaller one and I ordered the wrong size that's very very possible and then the big one goes that way around into there well that's just brilliant look at that all just brilliant what a fabulous tool <laughs> right what happens next mail pin headers right I think I think we're almost done with this bag now there's a couple of these wasn't there these buggers right these are always tricky I ate these things <laughs> there's two of them two times three yeah and it's on jumper one and jumper two there's jumper one place and solder the mail pin headers on the silk screen side of the mail board it's the shorter pins that you are soldering check that they are perfectly straight <laughs> perfectly straight i don't do perfectly straight so again i've got a they've got to go in straight Well, maybe I, uh, maybe I need a larger, because these are sticking out, so I need something flat. I happen to have this piece of plastic knocking around. It's something that goes in front of the light to give it a different, a different hue. But this, I think, could be employed to hold that down. Like so. Turn it over. Oh, that might work. Yeah, that might work. Let's do that. Straight enough, I reckon. Straight enough. Bag B. Bag B, this is all capacitors. Look at that. Look at the size of that thing. Look at that. What does that do? Good grief. Big fat ones. Four of those. Great. I'll get on with this and I'll see you at bag C. Uh, okay, I've just realized something is that I can't find, can't find the capacitors on uh, this side of the board. That's because they're on this side of the board. Now, it doesn't actually say anything in the instructions. It doesn't mention that you might now have turned the whole thing over. So, uh, um, am I now soldering on the back? Am I soldering on the back? Is that what I'm doing? I mean, when it comes to this fella, but then how uh, does it go over the top and stick out? Is the silk screen on the back just so that you can see it, or is it there so that you can solder it? So I put it on from this side, then soldering under on the other side could be difficult, or should I put it, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll see if I can find a picture of the thing. Yeah, yeah, well, that's interesting. Having a look at a picture online, there is a picture of it just a little bit side on, and you can see that things like this are sticking out the back and there's other capacitors and bits and pieces sticking out the back. So what this means is that yes, I will be putting, mounting these capacitors this way around, which means when it comes to soldering, I'm gonna to have to be really careful that I don't burn out other components with the soldering iron as I'm trying to get this, because these are gonna be through this way, getting the solder on. Well, you'll see all this in a minute, of course. 
<laughs> but that seems to be the plan. So I'm trusting the silt screen that that is telling me which way everything is going and I'm just soldering it on the other side. Ooh, right, tricky. But onwards and upwards. go that's looking pretty sweet all on the wrong side of the board <laughs> still got to break this thing in half and put it together yet yeah, right on to bag c bag c is these bits i've right, got a couple of screws right there easy enough a couple of headers which are going to go on those bits and this well that looks totally impossible and implausible Mm-hmm, a couple of nice little sliders. Right, what's it saying? Power connection. Solder the power connector, ensuring it's facing out from the edge of the PCB. Right, power connector. There is the power connector, like so. But again, I got this Got this thing in the way. Look, height-wise, what's that about? Why is everything in the wrong order? <sighs> I'm just assuming that the order works, but it doesn't. So I've now got to work out some kind of way of putting that down on a on a thing. Is that going to work? No. Ah. That's relatively straight, go with that, good. Right, next, female pin headers. Uh -huh. Right, two of these. Can go like that. Where are they? <laughs> oh, here. Good, 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 good. Spacer, secure the spacer onto control PCB. Don't know which one is the control PCB, to be fair. I mean, this is the one with the LEDs on. So, okay, it says it goes through, through the two hole with a silver outline. <laughs> what? Two hole? Through the two hole with silver outline. I mean, there's a, there and there. So I'm assuming it's going to be something like that. Which is the control PCB. Oh, I don't know. So this, I mean, this is the front panel. That's going to be held on by other things. Like so. So this spacer is probably going to want to go into there. When this goes over the top onto itself. No, but that doesn't go onto there, does it? No, it must do, <laughs> mustn't it? <laughs> no, but that, uh, how does it work? I don't understand how it works. How do these match up? I have no idea. Well, that's the back. I'm gonna worry about the spacer in a minute because I, I, don't, I don't quite understand that bit. Because I don't know which is a control board and which is the other board. I don't know. It doesn't say. I mean, this looks like it goes there 
and the other one must fold over to meet it. And then you've got this big hole for that to go through. Okay, okay. So let's get this bit in because that definitely goes there. And then we'll worry about the other bit. Right, 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 getting this in is tricky. There, all right, all right then, all right then. That's in. Nice. Look at that sticking off there. It's an extraordinary build, this thing. It says you're nearly at the end. The next part is critical and takes a bit of concentration. Ah. Uh, if you're feeling a bit strained, yeah, a break would definitely help. I don't know if I've got time for a break. No, I don't have time for a break. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> it suggests you should reply to all those unread messages or prove someone wrong on the internet. Okay. So mechanical parts are really delicate and you will need full attention. Now proceed. Now we will proceed to mount mechanical parts to panel. Ah, no, I haven't done, I haven't quite finished. Oh, I see I've jumped the gun. I haven't done these fader bits. I haven't done the fader bits. Where do the fader bits go? On the PCB it says attack and decay. Well, it can't go on this bit because that bit's going to be sticking through. So it has to go on this one here. All right, so it's these two bits. Does it matter which way up they go? Solder the faders were indicated. Oh, well, it can only go one way up because it's a little bit like that. Okay. All right, I've got a couple of clips I need to clip off. Ah, uh, so. A couple of bits which are a little high. Oh, look, it's got a circle. Got a circle here and two circles there. And there's a circle there and two circles there. So that's a good indication as well. But they seem to be able to only go in one way round. See, but, you know, I do have soldered, well, I've got soldered legs of these, soldered legs of IC sockets. I can't make those any smaller. So that has to sit on top because they're not legs that you cut off. Oh, I bent the buggery out of that. How did I do that? Oh no. All right, so now I'm back to the trying to turn it upside down bit again. Heat, heat, heat. Lots of solder. If I come out of this unscathed, it's gonna be a flipping miracle. Whew. Right, so I think I will take a break. I think I'm gonna go away. I think I'm gonna make the tea. Still got this bag of bits to do. The LEDs and the knobs and the patch sockets, and then I've got to put the thing together. So still more to do, but it's very exciting. Very, very exciting. This is quite some build, I have to say. And <laughs> it will... I'm looking forward to it working. Let's say that. So anyway, back, back to this. Uh, I've had some tea now, a nice couple of coffees and right. Let's see if I can work out what this is all about. So front panel components mounting tips. Now we will proceed to mount the mechanical parts to panel. This part of the assembly is critical. Please take your time. Read the instructions carefully. The components must not be soldered, it says, until they are placed on the PCB and fully attached to the front panel. 
two reasons for this. The height, the panel components are not all the same. Because of this, if not attached properly before soldering, they will not stay properly seated against the panel. This might cause mechanical stress, reducing life expectancy. What, my life expectancy? And uh, the worst case, cause them to break. Second reason, it's very difficult to align the components of the holes if the panel is not positioned prior to soldering. You know what, I think at this point, I probably need to break the thing in half because that's gonna give me a better idea of what the heck is going on. Now, it doesn't mention when you do this, but let's just give it a go, shall we? Okay, okay. Good, good, right. Now it should break in half. So now I have, I've broken it, broken it in half. This presumably goes together like that. So those pins fit with one another. That has to be right, yeah? That has to be right, has to be right. right let's go back to here. So what is this telling me? <laughs> Mini jacks. So let's not put these together yet. So mini jacks. So this is gonna be the front panel. This is definitely the front panel. That fits on there. We know that much. So mini jacks, place them, but don't solder them. That doesn't have a, a nut on the top. So we place them right. Okay, four of those. There's still another one, which I think goes over here. Good, good, yeah. Next it says pots. Now place the pots, don't solder. There's three of these. They look like they go here. One, two, three. Oh, don't push against things. Ah. Okay, better, better. That's in one here. So I did the knobs. Don't solder them yet. Switches. There's one and there's a mini one. Okay, good. Then LEDs, don't solder them. Yeah, we know, we know, right. So LEDs, envelope LED, gate LED. Let's bring in my, my piece of paper. So I'm on this one, but on the other way up. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's not helping. So LEDs, there's nothing, none of those are gonna help, okay. Envelope LED. I think that says that there. But which way round does it go? Long one is positive. Okay, positive like that. Gate LED. Gate is down here. According to this fella, that's here. Positive is there, that's the long one. And trigger LED. Okay, these have got little holes. And there's the, there's the LED B. LED B. Up here. LED B, okay. Phantom power. Right, yo. See how these two are, these are different. This has got a little pokey bit at the end, whereas this hasn't. So that fits into the front panel smaller Get a grip now. So that then goes in there. Right. Lovely. So that's all those LEDs. Then there's a bunch here that go along here that show a bit of a meter. So LED one is red. LED two and three are yellow. And you've got three greens. Good. So attach the front panel, adjusting the parts one by one until it fits. And then screw everything in. All oh, right, just like that. So I think I'm gonna to have to try to put these together uh, the other way up. 
I think that's going to be a good idea. <laughs> right. So, all these are going to be pushing up against each other. And they're all going to be higher. And I've got to solder them in, so I can't put it together. How? How on earth? How on jiggity earth is that supposed to work? So I think, I think the flaw in the instructions is telling you what these PCBs are, because I've treated them as the same to start with, whereas now they're different. And I don't want to be putting them together. I want to be attaching this one, whatever that is. I don't know what it is. What is it calling? It's calling main board and control board. So presumably the control board is the one with the knobs on. Let's go with that, yeah? Although it doesn't really talk about them that separately. So what's happening is I'm trying to work out how you put these together when you can't because it pushes up the LEDs. So we can't put these together. We have to put the front panel on this one first. So put that to one side. Forget about that for the minute. Just concentrate on this fella here. Okay. So you've got to screw it in first, starting off with the mini jacks. La -di -da -di -da. Da -di -da. Then the pots. Okay, ensuring that they're all flush and the PCB and panel are perfectly parallel. <laughs> perfectly parallel. Well, you know what? I don't think that's too far off. I don't think that's too far off. I think that'll work. I think that's good. So I can now solder everything right, other than the LEDs. The LEDs are in there, but I don't want to solder those yet. So I tend to find my commentary <laughs> on all these builds is basically me convincing myself to do something. It's talking myself into it. In fact, even when I'm just doing the time-lapse filming, I've not actually got the main cameras on, I'm still <laughs> talking myself into everything. It's like, go on, yeah, that'll be fine. Just do that, put it there, put it there, that one. Yeah, I reckon that's that. It's a constant conversation trying to convince myself that I'm doing the right thing. Now somewhere in here are the pots in amongst in amongst this somewhere I've got to solder those in. Cool now this this is tricky. So I did that one. I did that one. <laughs> <laughs> don't think I did. I don't know. Okay, good. I'm going to tighten things up a little bit if they need it. Right, okay. Getting, getting somewhere. Getting somewhere with that. Getting somewhere with that. Right, not done yet. I've got these pesky LEDs to do. So all the LEDs are there. If I turn them upside down, locate them into their holes. Right there there. Now they need to be flush and not coming out like that one is. So to do that, best way apparently is to use some masking tape. So I get a bit of masking tape, I stick it across there and then that should butt up to it and stay. Put a bit of masking tape across the front here. With a bit of luck, I can make that and that buck up to it and this one, which has gone awry, there. So hopefully that will just give them enough purchase to stay there. Come on now. You're on the home stretch.
so they are nicely flush. Now we're going to have to marry it up with this other bit, with all the LEDs that just fell out. <laughs> when placing the main board, carefully hook the Neutric Combo Connector through the hole on the front panel. Hook, it says. That's an interesting turn of phrase. I'm assuming it means that push thing has got to go through like that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Then carefully connect the pin headers between the main board and the control board. Right. Pin headers. That one looks good. That looks good. Is that all there is to it? So it's not all in, but is it because of the Neutrik? If that's as far as that's going. No, it's not. It could go further. Look, could go a little bit further, I think. No, it can't because no, that located as far as it will go. OK, so what I'm seeing here is that these aren't completely closing. Maybe there's something else in the way. Don't think so. Not majorly. And I have my suspicions that this, that the Neutrik can actually fit better than it currently is. Because there's these, oh, okay, I'll lose my LEDs for the moment while I'm trying to work this out. Because there are holes here for the Neutrik, and they're not completely in it. So potentially it could have gone down just a little bit more. In order to desolder that, because <laughs> there is a gap kind of all the way around. But I only, I mean, that's got an edge on it though, for heaven's sake. Not going to go down much further than it already is, but it does move. Ah, I might be trying too hard because that can't go through that hole any further. Well, why don't I try it? Why don't I try it first? I mean, maybe those pins connect enough, you know, enough for it to work, and then I can come back to it if it doesn't work. Because it's down a bit more at this bottom end. But it's still up a little bit. Because how much more work am I going to give to myself? It's only a matter of the LEDs. So if I do have to come back to it and undo it, I've got to take the Neutrik off. And then potentially reduce the height of the LEDs a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Okay, LEDs in one more time. So, Neutrik cable through, now fit the LEDs and solder them. Ooh, I've got a whole lot of space. Now, am I going to have these sticking through like I did on the pulses, or am I going to flatten them? Okay, then we're going to go for flat, and that way I can use the magic masking tape. So, put that all the way along there. Last bit, last bit. Now, just in case I have to reposition those, and they'll be coming in, I'm just going to leave the legs spiky for the moment. Right, knobs. Now, I also have this screw, just the one, mind, which I think is probably going to go there, and I think there should be two. Hmm. Definitely don't recall seeing another one. So where am I going to put that? I put it at the top or at the bottom for best purchase. I'm sure I can find something. Right, so knobs and stuff. Again, sounds like it's going to be a nice big 
red one. <laughs> Let's say that's game. Put those on there. Looking pretty sharpish, looking pretty bafaco. Definitely. Last bit is power connector. Fits in there. There you go, Bob's your uncle. Done. So is that, is that the answer? That thing there? Is that what it's all about? Has this been about all this thing here? But look, I mean, it's a, it's a double stacker with two-sided PCB things going on. All this rigmarole. God, that's been quite a build. And what I don't know is whether it works. So I guess that has to be next. <laughs> of course it has to be next. So yeah, that was a bit of a build. So there's loads of potential for crappiness in here. I might have messed it up a thousand times in different places. Oh, wow. That was tricky. I might have shorts. I might have solder that spilled over to, from one thing to another. I just don't know. So I guess we get to the testing stage. We have to plug it in to see whether I can get some kind of sound in from guitar or microphone or both or something. I don't know, how exciting. So let's go, let's go and do that. So did it work? Well, I fitted it in my rack. It's in here. Did it work? Well, you're just gonna have to wait to find out because I've decided to put the testing of this into the next video, which should be available in the channel about now because it's just getting all a bit too long and intense with this one. So we got to the end, we're ready to test it. Go and check out what happened in the other video. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes. <laughs>